I'll, I'll do whatever I can for it, but it does no good. We're getting down to two choices, either that or you're going to be one of those 70, 60 percent of the people that just don't vote. But the, I'm trying to appeal to someone to say, let's stop. I'm here to say I'm willing to vote against those programs. So you agreed to bills? Well, let's go. Let's go. Did, if you, had, I'm sorry. I wish you had been there. Okay, when that that question came up, because I handled it wrong. I the, the question I answered correctly. I'll, I'll never deny that. The question was, it's a yes or no answer. Yes or no answer. Before you vote for any bill, will you read every word on every page? of every bill before you vote on it? And my answer is no. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. You may not like the truth sometimes, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Why am I going to read 2,700 pages of a health care bill that I don't, there's no way I'm going to vote for it? But you're going to make me read, I've got a Bible on my desk that's 1,258 pages long. And I'm going to read that book from front to cover, and then I'm going to read it again, front to cover, in the time to read against a bill that I'm going to vote no on a health care bill. So I told you the truth. I'm not going to read a bill. I served the legislature, and one of the things I learned was to look at who sponsors the bill. And when I look at a bill, when I was Lizzie and I saw it was sponsored by four of the most liberal members of the West Virginia House of Delegates, I'm not going to waste too much time. I'm going to vote no on that. I'm going to read enough of it to get the gist of it. But are you really want me to read 500 pages before I vote no? I hope not. Because I'd rather take that energy of reading 2,700 pages of a health care bill and do something to help West Virginia, because I know I'm voting no on that. I don't want to expand government into more into my lives. I'm trying to get less government. And that's where we're talking about how we make the economy stronger. Get government out of our lives. I just met with the, the, the president of Wheeling Corrugated a major seal supplier in, the, in this country. And his point was, I'll put people back to work if you just get government off my back. That was the primary, th in the second one, he says, stop cap the uh, uh, card check. But he said, get government off my back. That's what I want to do. That, so if you think I'm trying to create public sector jobs, you're wrong. I want to find ways that when you talk to manufacturers, that's why they quit because government keeps putting more regulations on them. We've got a new regulation now in the construction industry on roofing tile, ro yeah. excuse me, roofing shingles. The EPA has now got some regulation about that gas is emitted from a, an asphalt shingle roof for crying out loud. We've got shingle roofs all over America and now they're gonna put a new regulation on it that's going to put the people that make shingle roofs out of business? Stop it. That's what I'm talking about, creating the jobs, is get government out of our lives. We have created such a bureaucracy in Washington, whether they're people that do hair, I don't understand that because I'm not over there. But I do know how to get government out of my life that I can in my, in my business. I fight them every day so that I can create jobs. I've created hundreds of jobs and I'll be there again for it. But it means I have to fight government every time. If we build a school, we design schools all over the state of West Virginia. We have to have the approval of the school building authority. We have to have the approval of the state fire marshal. We have to have approval of the state board of education. And then if you make any change, you've got to go back through and you got the approval again for all the changes that were made to it. And what does that do? It just increases the cost of schools in West Virginia. We don't need all the regulations. Yeah, right. That's my mission. That's what I'm talking about is trying to create jobs, is getting government out of our lives. Yeah. That not make sense? Yeah, that yeah. was what you stated a little while ago. <clears throat> you stated creating jobs. You did not say get rid of the government. You cut them down. You, you create an environment. I, they, I don't want government creating its own jobs. That's not what, but don't be confrontational with me. I'm, you need to get to know me as much as Augie. I'm not the guy, I'm not trying to build bigger government. We've seen that, it didn't work. I want less government. I want it out of my hair. I want to get our manufacturing back. That's why I'm going on a mission right now. I'm building my base going around talking to all the plant managers up and down the Ohio River Valley. I want to know what, was, what happened. Why are your people, why did you shut down? Go to PPG. 
And they'll tell you, one of the things they have at PPG, one of the problems they're doing with that, that shut down, there was a massive plant there. They, as part of, they're making the chemical, they use mercury. And their mercury that they effluent back into the river is within the tolerable levels. Okay? But the river has mercury in it. So when you put the two together, PPG's out of order. So who do we penalize? PPG? Or all the industries up the river that are contributing to it all along? Because if we lose PPG, with us, it, what, at one time it had 7,800 employees. Now it's out of what, 600? We're gonna shut that down then? Because we've allowed mercury to be deposited in the water in Hancock and Pittsburgh and in Wheeling. We're gonna lose another industry. We've got to figure it out. That's my role in Congress, is to find a way to allow a PPG to still create jobs in this country and not drive them to Mexico too. Just like the EPA did in Wheeling when we had a company called Picoma. They just left the country. 300 and some jobs left the country. I, I don't know that I've answered all your questions, but, but all I can say is it does us no good to be confrontational with each other. I'm trying to do the right thing too. I'm gonna make some mistakes, but I'm not gonna read all the, I'm going to read enough of a bill to know that this is not good for this country. Don't have me read 2,700 pages because I know I'm going to vote no. It's not good. There was something else you said that I, you were trying to nail me on a couple of things. <laughs> one was that, what was it? You remember what the other one was? I, 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 I'm sorry, I don't remember the uh, offhand of but. Oh, I'm doing the best we can. Down to two people. I'm going to fight Obama. I'm not going to be. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to continue this. It's not right. You have a chance. You get a vote for my opponent, and but then don't complain to me. <laughs> we're, we're looking for people that will stand up. Just you like you it. just did. Yeah, that's why I'm here. People that will stand up and not give a damn vote for us. Uh, they don't the White House. Thank you. That's <laughs> these why are, these are the kind of scumps we need to get out of there. And, and I'm going to listen to Dave. I'm going to listen to Augie. I'm going to listen to people. I don't have all the answers, but I surround myself with people that I trust. Put your hand up. I've done it with my company. I don't want to do this in this election. <laughs> because I believe in my heart that you want something better for this country. And we've lost it. And I'm fearful of it. I'm willing to step up here. I like what Sandy's doing to have these kind of meetings. That's important. Sandy and I may disagree on more than one occasion, but I believe and defend absolutely her effort to try to educate people so that we can get control back of our government again. Because people got complacent. I saw. It. Yeah, John, you. Uh, <clears throat> what? I wonder if you take this just a while here and you give us a little insight in yourself and your family and uh, let us know 